You're locked into the only podcast for Maine high school basketball. The biggest names, past and present. It's Big Time Hoops, the podcast, right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, another episode of Big Time Hoops, the podcast. We're back with our day one guy, the original, the man, first first guest up ever on Big Time Hoops, the podcast. He's back. We got Ben's here. Hardest work a man around. Ben, what's going on, man? Man, I'm just trying to catch you. How you doing? In, in the car, and I was gonna say you must have you must have like the most miles out of anyone in the in the entire state this summer because you're, you're yeah, to say you're too. I yeah, I have too many, man. I have something wrong with my car every week, but it's worth it. So before we get into what we what we're supposed to be talking about here, I just want to know what you got going on right now. Cause like you just came off some sessions uh somewhere yeah. last week, still working out with individuals all over the place. So what, what do you got going on right now? Yeah, uh right now in the in this weekend, next week, I have a lot of pro players coming through. Um, I don't know how all their schedules kind of correlated, but um, you know, we're gonna get a lot of pro sessions in and then uh camps you know we got a couple summer camps that you know thank god we're able to be lined up we were uh, kind of worried due to covid we didn't think they'd happen um but you know obviously following precautions and everything like that we're still good got the uh, the main top 30 camp coming up uh first two weekends of august and then sessions you know trying to get these college and high school players ready uh college more you know more college than high school because we got to send them off soon uh hopefully 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 they can go off um, so it's crazy busy, man, but but it's good. It's good that there's some normalcy going on now. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I, I think it's kind of gotten back to normal for you. I know, like, earlier on with COVID, tough finding gym space and stuff like that. Does it feel more like normal right now? Yeah, it's getting there. You had to get more creative, but, you know, there's always ways. If you, I really feel like if you're invested in the athletes, you can find ways to get them better, no matter what, and if they're willing as well, so. And I'm guessing this has kind of pushed you to to adapt to find new ways to be creative. So, like, what what have, what have you, how have you evolved during this time as a trainer? Yeah, I think it's it's just giving more, obviously more virtual stuff. For me, it's been tough because I'm such a you know in your face in the environment type person. But I think it's just getting more creative with virtual training, uh, holding them accountable to do things on their own. I know, like. You know, you, you wouldn't believe it, but, uh, you know, actually getting outside and doing more stuff on their own. And I think what's been so cool is while doing that, I've seen a lot of players, I wouldn't say find a new passion, but they're, they're really seeing how, how, developing, how developing your game and how putting more time in on their own really can create that separation. I think, um, you know, we're just seeing a, a different change. So other than virtual training, man, it's just uh, – you know, trying to get creative with gym spaces and things like that. Gym spaces starting to come along, though. It seems like you're, you're starting to get your gym spaces back for the most part, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's off and on. You know, some weeks we don't get them due to, to summer camps. Um, but for the most part, I've had it, which I've been very thankful for because I know a lot of trainers haven't. So it's been good. I, I You know, I made a really – I don't know. It was, it was luck. I, I partnered with a couple key gyms around the entire state. And, uh, you know, we've had those to fall back on with all this happening. They've had more hours opening, and it, it's just been perfect. So, um, yeah, I've been very fortunate, man. And the reason why I wanted to bring you on is because you got your big camp here. You got your big showcase coming up on it, coming up in about, in about a month here. So the main top 30, for those that aren't familiar with it, what's the background on this thing? Yeah, so this will be the second uh, time we've done it. Last year was the first. And uh, it was phenomenal. And the whole idea was to put something together that main players can have as their own, to take pride in, you know. And, uh, you know, I know that there's, uh, there's showcases, but there's never been a full-on event uh, that I think really has had the top of the top. Um, you know, some people might argue who's the top, but um, it, it's something that is really, really important to me because I, I think and I hope the whole, the whole purpose of it is to give Maine kids a platform to continue to play against the best, right? Uh, continue to get better, you know, figure out, okay, hey, if this is where you want to go and this is how high of a level you want to go to, you know, let's continue to, to show you, uh, you know, the blueprint, bring in the best of the best trainers, uh, media outlets, coaches for those that haven't been recruited yet, uh, and, and even former, you know, high school and college players from Maine, pro players that have made it, and let's just continue to elevate 
main basketball. And, and, and that's the whole point of it for exposure, for experience, for skills training, and for competitiveness, man. So it's invite only. So it's going to be the best of the best. But yeah. for those that maybe didn't get the invite th this year, yeah. what can people expect when they show up to this thing? You, you mentioned like some of the people that come through. I, talk about how it's structured and, and what people can actually expect if, if uh, they are going to camp this year or if they get invited in the future. Yeah, well, if you didn't get invited, number one, you know, we're always going to miss someone. There's always going to be late bloomers, people that we might not get to see as much as we want to. I try to have a real, like, you know, vigorous process where I go through uh, dozens of AAU coaches and directors. Uh, you know, I try to talk to as many high school coaches that I can. Uh, you know, obviously, I see a lot of talent myself. Um, and, and we really do. We try to, we try to make it as, as selective and as detailed as we can for the process. Um, and if we miss someone, you know, obviously, we hear about it and we, we try to look out for them the next year. Um, you know, so I think, I think it's, it's one of the best, you know, processes and we take all political out of it. I don't care who you play for, what AAU team you're on. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I try to get the best of the best for people that are coming this year. Um, that was actually one of the biggest compliments I had from last, last year's camp. They said how structured it was. They never seen something so structured before, uh, players come in. Um, you know, we, we call them, or we, we obviously welcome them. We then call them in by teams. They get a customized jersey. So, you know, uh, we, we have uh, New Jersey sets out of, I think, it, I, I think it might be New Jersey. I'm not, I don't think that's just their name. Um, I, I really do believe they're out of New Jersey. They do a lot of stuff, man, for like ball is life camps. And uh, they do some NBA jerseys. I mean, they're, they're very, very high end. They, uh, they customize jerseys for every player at the camp. Uh, so we call, call you in by, uh, by your teams. Uh, once we get started, we get warmed up. We get into uh, uh, stations and we have a headline guest. Uh, we got Tyler Elf coming back this year. Uh, for the boys' side and for the girls' side, we have Ed Downs, who is uh, who was, uh, LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, his former trainers. He, he was uh, our trainer. He was with the Miami Heat. Um, he resides in Augusta, Maine. So he's been here. Mike Dunn is done. He's going to do a quarantine, a seven day quarantine. Um, so he's going to come in. He's going to quarantine a week before. And, and we're trying to follow all protocols, precautions, right. everything like that. Uh, but Mike Dunn has like 200 plus thousand followers. Uh, Tyler Ralph was there last year, man. Works out with Julius Randle, works out with a lot of the top players um, in the NBA. He just worked out with a couple WNBA, works out with Sky Diggs, trained Sky Diggs. Um, so he's legit. And they, and they run, you know, they run some of the, some of the camp. Um, they're the headline guests. Um, some of the best trainers in Maine and even from, from out of Maine for the next few years. They come in, we do stations, and then we, we get games and we get competitive games. And so it's a very, I think, top-notch and trying to hit every part type event. And we, and we try to really um, – we try to up the competitiveness. We, tr we try to make sure people are there to get better. Um, and uh, yeah, we try to try to increase main basketball, honestly. So one of the, one of the words you just mentioned, competitiveness, which is yeah. kind of what I want to ask you about. So it's one thing to to just you know be working out, get better, and stuff like that. How important is that competitive aspect? How important is it if you want to get better to compete against the best, to compete against people better than you? Like how far does that go along in, in someone's development? How important is that? Uh, oh, it's the foundation. I think I think that. How competitive you you are drives how much you're going to do, uh, the passion, the will, the energy that you're going to provide, the focus. Um, you know you got to compete, um, and and I think that's what is really exciting about Maine basketball. We spoke about this on that first podcast that uh, you know Maine has very competitive basketball play, and these players they they should take pride in their invite, and that's why I I kind of do love that there are there are players out there that you know, they were upset that they didn't get invited. And that shows how important this camp is to them. And, and I don't get upset with that. I love that. And, and that's exactly what we're trying to create. But these players that come in, we, we had a message last year that, uh, you know, you, you're creating something that might you, might you might not even understand how big it is. You've got younger girls and guys uh, looking up to you um, that, you know, once, you, once you're at this camp, you know, you've stamped it as approved. And they're looking to see, 
uh, you know, what you think of it. They're looking to see how you go through it. They're looking to see how hard you work through it because we're going to be promoting this. And, uh, you know, it's not just for the players this year. It's for all the young girls and guys after that. So uh, competitiveness has to be there and it's going to be there. Um, and, you know, that's why we've tried to make a reasonable fee, but we have made a fee that even when you are invited, you have to pay to then commit uh, because I, I, I want you to be there for the right reasons. You know, I found in the past there, there's been free camps and free exposure stuff. And, you know, you see the drive is just not there because uh, there's nothing, there's nothing, I, not, I don't know the word, maybe that they have to lose or that they're not having to put forth. But, um, you know, when, once you have some money on the line, um, you, you see that people take it a little more serious. And, and obviously the money is then used to create a better camp, but you, you get my point, hopefully. And then another thing you talked about too, is this, you, you're adding the king of the court, right? King and queen of the court. Is this something different you guys are doing yep. this year? So mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to see who's the best. That, what's, what's that all about? Yeah, I just, I mean, you know, when we were younger, it's, it's, uh, I, I, bro, one-on-one -on -one just is that that's that's the real real way where you can see if someone can get past someone if you can you know you're going to go through different defenses you're going to have to be challenged with uh you know people that play you in different ways and I I don't think there's really a lot of you know there's a few but there's not many better ways to to get better than one-on-one -on -one, man I mean you know, that's, that's as, as old school foundational as you can get. So, yeah. And then, and, and it creates, it creates competitiveness. Like who can say that they're the, they're the best player in Maine. Like I, I can take you off the dribble. I can score on you anytime I want. Um, no matter, no matter who's in front of me, you know, I'm going to get a bucket. And so it's just adds a competitive different feel to the camp and hopefully it goes well. If the players don't like it, then we'll try to find new things. But th the whole point is just, making it better and getting it different and, you know, more competitive and a better experience every single year. That's what I'm looking for. And it's one of those things to write competition. If, if you don't like it, if, if you got embarrassed, go work hard, come back back next year and get that crown, right? That's it. That's it. You, you know, you're here to represent Maine and you know, that's uh, hopefully you take pride in that. And that's what we want. And that's the biggest thing too. I didn't mention that earlier. Kids go so far uh to massachusetts to new york to all these different states there's nothing in maine there's nothing for us to really just take pride in that we have as as main basketball players and so that's what it provides as well so obviously we got some headliners here right so who are some of the names if you can if you can disclose who are some of the people that have committed do you have the 30 for boys and girls already or is that still still tricky yeah out? yeah so so this is the tough thing about this year um, it actually might work out perfect. I don't know if we are allowed to have the full 60, the 30 upperclassmen and, and lower classmen. Uh, so right now for the boys, I think we're looking at like 53 we have out of the 60, which, which might be perfect. We might be pushing it right there. And the girls were rounding up to 50. I think we're at like 49. Uh, so like one or two more girls. Um, for the girls' side, man, I mean, um, you got Jamima. Uh, you got Amanda Cabantu, you got, uh, you got Camille. Um, uh, I know uh, um, Emily, uh, the, the girls player from Lewiston. Uh, she's going to be signing up any day now. Sarah Talon is signing up uh, this week. Uh, you got JC Christopher, Peyton Grant, Sophie McVicker. Um, man, I can keep going and going. You know, you got some young talent like Lizzie Gruber, uh, Sloan, Sierra Carson. They're all coming in. Um, you know, you got players from, from way up north, like Faye Schoberg, Bella McLaughlin, um, you know, um, man, I can, I can keep going and going and going. I, there's plenty of girls on the boys side. We got Cash McClure. Um, we couldn't get, we had Dom Campbell and Brady Cummins, but they're, they're heading the prep route. So, uh, it was tough They're They're not going to be around for this year, but, um, Dom came, Dom and Brady both came last year and they were, they were killing it. Um, you know, but, but for the boys side off the top of my head, we got, uh, we got, um, oh, Isaac Farnham. We got, uh, you know, we got the young boys, uh, Calvin and, and Landon and Zach Poison. Um, we got, uh, da -da 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 -um. Dylan Griffin. He's coming through uh, big John Shea. He's coming in. 
Um, so, and, and there's a ton more, man. I could go on and on. Ian Murray, you just posted about him. We got Ian. He, he, he's, uh, he's committed. So it's legit, legit of legit. We got it. And uh, one thing I noticed too, is that it's not just people from one part of the state. It's like you said, you're, you're grabbing them from, from all over. So not only yeah. are the players getting exposure, you know, maybe to college coaches and stuff like that, but maybe some of these people from small towns up North, get exposure to the other competition, like some of the bigger names you mentioned down, downstate, right? Yeah. Yep. It's big. They need it too. And it's just no shortage of talent. Like, like I said, you just, you just started running off the list of names and it's just, it's unbelievable. I feel like the amount of talent right now, just throughout the state, I feel like. Yeah. It hasn't been better. Oh, I completely agree. And I think, I think this is a really important time. I, I don't know. I can't describe exactly why, but, um, you know, I was looking at, and this could be because of anything else, man. I don't know the, the pure logistics and, you know, uh, details of everything, but I was looking just the other day at New Hampshire, and I know they have Brewster Prep there, but, um, you know, if you look at their top 25, just boys, and you look at where they're going to college, and then you look at our top 25 boys, where they're going to college, you know, can you really say we have that different of talent? I don't think so. You know, I, I, and if you're looking at the schools that are looking at the boys in Maine and the schools that are looking at the, the dudes that are just in the next state over, it, it's really crazy, the difference. Um, and, you know, our girls, I, I, think, I think I've always said this for years now, our girls are just as good as anyone else in the entire United States. And that wasn't, that's not just me. Tyler Ralph came in. You know, this guy works with the best of the best. And he stopped all the girls in the middle of the camp and he said, listen, you guys are like, you're right there with all the other girls in the entire nation. Like, um, you guys are, are for real, for real, he said. And so, so my two things with that is, I think our boys, and, and I think there's a lot of different people doing, doing a lot of things. Now, I'm not saying it's just the top 30. And you got a lot of AAU programs pushing boys and getting us into these maid leagues and different AAU tournaments. But our boys need more recognition, and they, they need to get better exposure. They don't need to just go to these random AAU showcases just to play games. Like, we got talent that really needs to be seen. And, you know, and there's, there's so much more to that than I can say. Um, but but and, then, and then our girls, like, you know, our girls really haven't been recruited. We have no recruiting websites recruiting our girls and ranking them and stuff like that. And, I mean, like, we got hoopers here, too. And so that's the mission, number one, getting – these players, the, the continued better exposure that they deserve. And then, uh, you know, the next part is, uh, you know, getting players that might not be getting the respect they deserve to this camp with all, we got media outlets coming. We got different social media platforms coming to get them maybe the exposure. Uh, Cause you never know. You're just one play away from going viral. So, um, you know, to get them this type of recognition they might deserve and not have had yet, especially up in the County. Shout out to the county. Shout out to yeah, the county man. right there. Ballers up there. There's ballers. Yeah. And then, they, you know, they don't get to be seen like everybody else. And this just gives them another platform and another way to be to be seen. I think I think that's the biggest thing. It's like you said, exposure. You know, it, yeah. once, you know, because the talent's there. And then once people start seeing that, I mean, just look at – I tend to go more on the girls' side because we got more girls doing it. Uh, right. They may just might be getting more exposure than the guys. But, like, there's just yeah. – there's no, there's no shortage of talent. No, and there's no disrespect to the boys. I no. mean, um, you know, but but there's I, I don't know the exact number, but I know I've only heard of Sydney Blodgett going, you know, like to the WNBA. And I don't know if we've had any any young man or, you know, uh, um, a young boy going to the direction of making it from Maine to the NBA. I know Nick Mayo was close, um, you know, but we, we just – that, that, that shouldn't be acceptable with the amount of talent we have in this state. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's the end goal and why you should be playing basketball. Uh, but with the talent we have, man, it just – it makes you kind of scratch your head like, what's going on? Like, why are we so far behind everybody else and even a state that's right next door to us? They've sent players to the NBA and WNBA. You know, what, what are we doing? What's going on? So I, I just try to – trying to get together with coaches and different trainers and just – like I said, elevate and make this uh, make the state better. Definitely pushing it. That, that's for sure. That's what yeah. I see. And one thing I've noticed too, like just from watching like the, the stuff you put up online, the people you work with, mm. talk about talent and just 
how much I feel like in the last 10 years, like the bag of tricks kids have nowadays versus 10 years ago, you know, like yeah. even when I was growing up 15 years ago it was, you know, be able to shoot from 15 feet, go left-handed, you'll be all right, you'll go places. Like that, that was it. But like, and then for Same a little, when I was like, cool. yeah, but then, and then like for a little bit, it was like, oh wow, kids are Euro stepping now. But like now, nah, it's like the stuff you're teaching yeah. them. It's like, you know, we were taught go go hard to the bucket, but now it's you know getting the paint, floater, off the wrong foot. You know, all these different things. Yeah. As a trainer, like how, how are you push? Like how, how are you challenging these kids? Like you know, where do you go in terms of add this to your bag of tricks? Like you know. I'm just, I'm just curious because I see you putting in so much work with these kids. Yeah. And I, I just I wonder like where it comes from. Like, you know, how do how do you start? Like where do you start? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. And I think it's overlooked by a lot of people. I think people just see not just mine, but a lot of trainer coaches, Instagram, online social medias, and they only get a 15, 20 second clip and they think that's just the whole session, you know. Um uh but where we start out with with moves is I look at a player, I look at, you know, what their goals are, where they're wanting to be, what their roles are in their team, their offense. And then from there, it's a lot of film study, you know, especially for the high school, my high school, college players, pro players, Uh, like the two pro players I'm working with tonight, they just sent me a whole text form of like stuff that they're trying to work on off different dribble handoffs and ball screens and, uh, you know, different reads. And so, um that's the first part like really making it personalized around them their offense and their role and then the second part which i think is the most overlooked by trainers is teaching the right moves to the players that have different strengths you know like and i think that's from just studying the game like you can't have you know um you know a girl that's five five that is fast and quick uh you know try to do a lot of stuff for like like length, like covering ground with length, you know, you want her to have, or him to have, you know, manipulative, uh, you know, slow to quick, quite tight move, changing your speeds. Um, You know, you want something to be based around what her or his strength is uh, so that they're more apt to do it in a game. You know, what I I think I see that goes wrong is too many moves are being taught to players that, you know, they're completely different. Uh, They're, you know, those moves aren't going to be generated to help their strengths or, how they're going to cover ground or, you know, even, even, um, you know, what hand they favor. Um, So, so that's the whole process of it in a quick nutshell. And it's really cool, man, because uh, I I don't, don't come up with this. I I listen to podcasts. I I study a lot of film and, you know, you really see that like, whoa, how James Harden moves is really different than how Steph Curry moves. And, you know, even though they might have a lot of separational moves, they're very different. James Harden's separational moves, very different than how Steph Curry creates separation. And, you know, they're two completely different players with two completely different uh, uh, strengths. And, you know, their athleticism is different and all that. So uh, it's very fun, but it is a a very uh, personalized process to each player for the high school, the college, and the pros. Yeah. And obviously it's working. I mean, look at the kids you're working with. And uh, the sessions you're having, like I said, like I just, I feel like these kids are just so more well-rounded the skill set and the talent, yeah. like even at a younger age, I think it's crazy. So definitely push the yeah, game. Man. I love it. It's a blessing. They're teaching me too. It's really fun. <laughs> it really is, man. So before we get up out of here, for those kids that didn't get the invite this year, how about get, give, give the kids out there? Because one thing about this podcast is I want to talk to people. I want to hear mm-hmm. their story. I want to tell their story. But I also want to be able to, you know, have a platform to provide the youth with advice or, or yeah. just, just great stuff. So for the kids out there, maybe a little bit younger that didn't get the invite this year, some great advice you can give them to, to be on the radar for next year. I got, I got a couple. No, number one, I don't say who's, who's great at the end of the day. I don't, I don't determine your, the end of your journey. There's been a lot of people, you know, Ja was one. There's a story that came out the other day about he was put in another gym and thank God someone went to go get food and a coach walked by the gym and saw him and pulled him into the main event. Steph Curry, if you look at his, his, uh, you know, strengths and weaknesses and what they thought of him when he was coming out of high school and even college, man, you would have never thought he was uh, was supposed to be where he's at today. Uh, Dame Lillard, just look where he came from college, you know? So the whole point of this is um, we don't, you know, at the end of the day, no one uh, should make you feel like you are great or bad. Only, only, let me say it like this. No one should be able to determine what you should feel like. You know, at the end of the day, your game is going to speak for itself. If we miss someone, 
or if we didn't get it right, you know, make, make me eat my words, make me be wrong and put on a show next year, dominate, uh, make, you know, like, like a, a, my coach used to say, be so good. They can't take you out. Be so good. I can't ignore you, you know, and I keep hearing your name and I got to invite you, um, you know, cause, cause, uh, uh, no, nothing says that, that I have the final say and that I'm right. And that I know everything about basketball, like people change, people develop people get motivated and people can prove people wrong every single day so if we missed you use it as motivation don't use it as an end to your your journey and uh just you know to check it off and say well coach ben didn't invite me so that means i'm terrible no like make me eat my words prove me wrong and uh we'll get you there next year so hopefully that's enough motivation and as real as it can get i like that right there anything else you want to plug anything else you want to plug before we get up out of here I just, I just want to say I appreciate you and everything you're doing for Maine basketball. And I think, I think what you're doing right now uh, is uh, um, so cool getting young players, young hoopers from Maine uh, on, a, on, a, on a platform like this to tell their story, uh, to continue to motivate others. And you are just as big as me or anyone else that's trying to raise Maine basketball. And so I want to salute you and, uh, you know, just uh, tell people to – uh, continue to love this game, take it serious, and uh, let's put Maine on the map, man, because we got too much talent uh, to be um, where we're at right now. And uh, I know I am going to do everything I can to make sure more and more kids are being seen and getting exposure. So appreciate about, you, dude, for real. All about pushing it forward, right? Just trying to That's push it. it to the next level. That's it. Uh, for, and also, uh, for the Top 30 camps, that open the public. If people want to go check it out, can they pop in? So this year, due to COVID, we can't even have parents there. Uh, we're even getting coaches, coaches from out of the state. Hat, we're doing a uh, live stuff. Uh, so, I mean, you know, outside of like social media platforms, you know, and stuff like that, unfortunately the general public can't come in, but um, let's just, uh, let's just pray next year. Everything is better. And uh, we, we're going to pack it out and we're just going to make up for every, everyone that had to miss it this year. So um, unfortunately, no, can't just have it open to the general pub public or even parents, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put it on our, our lives on the Facebook and try to go Instagram or other stuff. And, uh, we'll try to, we'll try to showcase it to everybody. So. Absolutely. Hardest yeah, working man tough, around, man. ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, about to go work out with Camille. Shout out to Camille. Had, had her yeah. on the podcast last week. I had Keegan Highland on last night and we were talking about Camille and now he's in Camille's driveway, just ready to go. Dude, I'll tell you, I just was texting Keegan just last week, and you got to talk to him about some of those legend stories about him shooting in the lights off, hundreds of makes, uh, you know, turning the gym lights off, shooting in the dark. Um, you know, he was a huge motivational factor for just someone like me that was in the same grade as him um, because I was hearing the, the type of work he was putting in. And, you know, you were hearing all the, all the uh, success stories and offers and interest he was getting. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's going to be a podcast that I can't wait to hear because that is a phenomenal, phenomenal player, person, and uh, just adversary for Maine basketball. Yeah, great, great story. It's a good one. So check out that one. And thank, yeah. thanks again for coming through too. Top 30 gotcha, camp. And uh, anybody who wants to follow the journey, we got a couple a couple Instagram accounts. We got the Top 30 camp. Got the Ben Sear page too. So people make sure to check that out to, to stay in the loop. So Yeah. Good stuff. Push at Coach Ben Tier on Instagram, at Main Top 30 on Instagram and uh, Facebook. There we go. Top 30 camp coming soon. Shout out to Ben for coming through and uh, spotlighting that camp. It's going to be great. It's great for me in basketball. That's what it's all about here. So thank yes, you sir. for watching. Thank you for listening. Check out next week's episode, Big Time Hoops, the podcast. We'll be back again. We'll see you.